Greetings everyone, Truth Surge here again. I thought I'd do a couple of videos on the Jesus myth theory, my take on it. And um, I want to take this video to just simply um, summarize it. And then in the following videos, I want to um, show you a few things. Um, so my take is more like Earl Doherty's take because that's basically uh, what I agree with. All right. So what I want to do is just basically explain to you what the Jesus myth theory is, in my opinion, the, you know, my take on it, and then I'll tell you a few neat things in the upcoming videos, uh, evidence that will back up these claims. For real. So basically, I know I have a tendency to ramble on and on and on, so I'll try to keep it real short. Basically, the Jesus myth theory says that Jesus never existed as a person. Jesus of Nazareth, the Jesus of the Gospels. Basically, you had two strands of Christianity, the Gospels as we know. But before that, you had the epistles, the Gospel of Paul, the beliefs of Paul. Doherty calls that the Jerusalem tradition. Then um, you have the Gospel tradition that came along later. So the earliest Christians, we, we see their beliefs displayed in the epistles and so their beliefs went something like this uh, they believed in a heavenly Jesus because Jesus was believed to be the son of God and where else do sons of God's reside but in heaven with their father and they believed that this Jesus had been crucified had been killed in either the indefinite past or before the world was made, or shortly around the time when the world was actually created, but certainly long, long before the first century. They believed that Jesus descended through the seven levels of heaven and was crucified in the lowest level by the demons that inhabited that level. Jesus took on the appearance of a man. He didn't become a real man. He took, on the light, he took on the appearance of a man, the likeness of a man. He looked like a man. The reason he did that is so he could trick the demons into killing him. Because if they had known he was the Son of God, they would never have killed him. Because then that would have uh, initiated God's plan of salvation. So they unwittingly killed the Son of God and thereby sealed their own doom. Because if they had never initiated it, in the first place, uh, they could have continued to wreak havoc on the planet. So the demons crucified Jesus in the lowest level of heaven. And this happened long, long, long ago, eons ago. At least in the de indefinite past, um, so that it was a done deal. No one knew about that until God started to reveal it to people like Paul. Apostles, messengers. God started to reveal all of this that had already taken place to people like Paul from the pages of the Old Testament. Paul and these other early apostles were seeing the Messiah in the pages of the Old Testament. God was revealing Jesus and the salvific act that had been accomplished long ago. Psalms 23, I mean, uh, Psalms 22, Isaiah 53, and uh, of course the verse... Today, uh, uh, you are my son. Today, I have begotten you. Oh, and uh, here's the uh, book by Earl Doherty. It's, don't know if you can see that. It's called The Jesus Puzzle. You can uh, find this on Amazon.com. Uh, it's a good book. If, if you don't want to spring for the money, whatever it is, $5 for a used copy. Uh, he has a website. Just do a Google search for Jesus Puzzle. And... Uh, most all this stuff is, is on his website. Um, now, let me say one thing to lead into the next video where I'm going to make a bold statement here. I don't know if I've bored everyone away, you know, by rambling so far, but uh, I'm going to make a bold statement. I'm going to show you something in this very next video. I'm, I'm going to bet that 99.9% .9 of you have not heard of this even people who are familiar with the Jesus myth theory. For real. So what I want to do is uh, give you a taste of that now. All right. 
if the early Christians believed in a Jesus who had always been in heaven with God, had never been on earth, had never been seen physically by anybody, never lived a life on earth, was always in heaven, he descended, got killed, God raised him from the dead, he went back up, and he's now at the right hand of God, he's always been there. <clears throat> and they, and if the early Christians believed that he was coming to earth at the end of time to take all the believers to heaven, that appearance on earth in their minds would be a first appearance and, of course, a last appearance, a first, last, and only appearance. So what I want to do in this next video is I want to examine all of the references to Jesus' second coming that we can find in the epistles. Because we already know the Gospels, Mark, Matthew, John, and Luke, as well as Acts, speak of an earthly Jesus. So I'm not going to look in those because we already know the Orthodox version. But what I want to do is look and see how the epistle writers referred to Jesus' uh, appearance on earth. Do they speak of it as a return? Do they speak of it as a second coming? So I'm going to look at over 40 different passages that spans 14 different New Testament writers. And we're going to see if these early Christians of the first century referred to Jesus' second coming as a second coming, or if they didn't. So, if you'll stick around with me, I think I'm going to be able to explain this Jesus myth theory stuff in a clear and easy to understand way. So without any further hesitation, let's take a look at how the early Christians viewed Jesus' second coming. 